so now we are in the second part so this session is about the cells of uh, cementum and its functions and little bit about the developmental anomalies and other problems seen in cementum so we have two types of cells they are cementoblasts and cementocytes cementoblasts are which is derived from dental follicle okay hope you remember dental follicle giving rise to cementum periodontal ligament and alveolar bone whereas papilla giving rise to pulp and dentin so the transformation of mesenchymal cells of dental follicle giving cementoblast so these cemento progenitor cells synthesize collagen and protein polysaccharide so these cells have numerous uh, mitochondria a well formed golgi apparatus and large amount of granular endoplasmic reticulum so while uh, seeing the histology the root resorption uh, areas are showing that the cementoblast can arise wherever viable dentin is exposed to the soft tissues of periodontal ligament so the induction of cementoblast from periodontal ligament cells can apparently take place throughout the life as evidently as evidenced by the physiological areas of cemental repair so the cemental repair will be happening throughout the life wherever there is a uh, loss of tissues happen or resorption happens the cementoblast will act and produce new cement so cellular turnover among cementoblasts is slow compared with that in the osteoblast so the bone and cementum are adjacent between these two we have periodontal ligament so the turnover rate is comparatively low in cementum compared to the alveolar bone furthermore it appears that cementoblasts are capable of altering the rate of cementum deposition whereas the cementocytes cementocytes in lacunae and the channels in which their process extent which are known as canaliculi so canaliculi are the extended processes cementocytes are seen in lacunae and the central cell mass may appear round or oval which is having 8 to 15 micrometer and the cytoplasm is palely basophilic and the nucleus is centrally located it has a central nucleus with basophilic cytoplasm so cemento enamel junction is another feature we know what is cemento enamel junction it is the boundary between the tooth crown and root in clinically but anatomically it is a junction between enamel and cemento so it has basically four types so the first type is cementum overlaps enamel the cementum overlapping enamel 60 percentage second one is cementum meets at a point cementum and enamel meets at the cervical end and 10 percentage enamel and cementum does not meet and 1.6 percentage that is the least where the enamel overlaps cementum that is the least percentage most common is cementum overlaps enamel if the cementum is uh, not meeting enamel there will be exposed dentin because root dentin is covered by cementum so exposed dentin means there will be chances of hypersensitivity so cej can be uh, located various uh, methods like conventional modified tactile by visual method using probes bite wings or vg so we can use uh, many probes like florida probes perio probes so many probes are there to locate cej so another junction is cemento dentinal junction so it is a terminal apical areas of cementum where it joins the internal root dentin is called as cemento dentinal junction okay the apical area of cementum this is apical area of cementum where it joins with the internal root dentin so it joins with the internal root dentin is known as cemento dentinal junction so the nature of cdj is of particular importance because by because it forms an interface between two very different mineralized tissues okay these are the two mineralized tissues cementum and dentin and it is also of clinical importance because of the processes involved in maintaining tooth function 
while repairing a diseased root surface so it is of clinical importance because it has repairing functions involving repairing of a diseased root surface it is 2 to 3 micrometer now let's move on to the functions we have three basic functions anchorage adaptation repair and resorption in anchorage it is to furnish a medium for the attachment of collagen fibers that bind the tooth to the alveolar bone so the connective tissue attachment to the tooth impossible without cementum okay so we know that periodontal fibers are giving anchorage so it is attaching to the cementum so without connective tissue it is not possible so in hypophosphatasia where the uh, phosphatasia uh, the element of cementum is missing loosening and premature loss of anterior deciduous teeth occurs that itself showing that without cement there is no possibility of anchorage and the exfoliated teeth are characterized by an almost total absence of cementum okay so that is a clinical evidence of cementum and its anchorage whereas adaptation the second one it is a continuous deposition of cementum is of functional importance because cementum is not resorbed under normal condition as the most superficial layer of cementum as age increases a new layer is deposited that keeps the attachment apparatus intact so a new layer will be continuously deposited it is happening throughout the life the repair process it is a major reparative tissue for root surfaces so damaged roots such as fracture resorption can be repaired by the deposition of new cementum and resorption of cementum cementum although is less susceptible to resorption than bone but it is carried out by multinuclear odontoclast so sometimes question might ask what is the functions of odontoclast it is a multinucleated giant cell it causes destruction or resorption and may continue into the root dentine so what are the factors of resorption so we have local factors and systemic factors local factors are trauma from occlusion orthodontic movement pressure from malaligned erupting teeth cyst tumors teeth without functional antagonist if proper antagonist is not there that also a chance of resorption embedded teeth replanted and transplanted teeth periapical and periodontal diseases whereas the systemic factors calcium deficiency it could be due to hypothyroidism hereditary fibrous osteodystrophy paget's disease and also could be an idiopathic reason so cementum resorption appears microscopically as bay like concavities on the root surface so these multinucleated giant cells and large mononuclear macrophages they are generally found adjacent to the cementum which is undergoing active resorption okay so resorption occurs most commonly in the apical third than middle third and gingival third so here it is the most common site of resorption so it is always associated with the multinucleated giant cell i said odontoclast or cementoclast now let's see few anomalies we have covered in detail about the anomalies but uh, especially the cementicles so cementicles are small globular masses of cementum which is found approximate in around 35 percentage of human roots so may not always be attached to a cementum surface but may be located in free uh, as a free uh, appearance in periodontal ligament though these may be result from micro trauma when extra stress on sharpies fibers cause a tear in the cementum and uh, they are more commonly found in the apical and middle third of root and also in root furcation areas and it may develop uh, from calcified epithelial rest and uh, sp spicules of cementum or alveolar bone when it is traumatically displaced next one is enamel pearl we have seen so in some of the hardwick epithelial root sheath cells remain attached to the forming root surface they can produce a focal deposit of enamel that is known as enamel pearl so which is uh, plaque retentive structures which promote periodontal disease they look like uh, calculus but it is actually uh, enamel pearl which cannot be sealed off or scaled off we cannot remove it uh, in scaling procedure and some of the abnormalities of cementum uh, we have many abnormalities the most common one is cemental hyperplasia hyperplasia means over functioning so hypercementosis or cemental hyperplasia 
it is abnormal thickening of cement there will be large amount of uh, cementum compared to the normal one it is a largely an age related phenomena it can be localized to one tooth or maybe generalized affect the entire dentition so if the overgrowth improves the functional qualities of cementum it is termed as cemental hypertrophy if the overgrowth occurs in non functional teeth or if it is not correlated with increased function it is known as cemental hyperplasia okay so these are different what is cemental hypertrophy and hyperplasia different hypertrophy is if the overgrowth improves the functional qualities of cementum that is not a uh, problem it is it is improving its functional quality that is known as hypertrophy but if the overgrowth occurs in a non functional teeth or if it is not correlated with increased function that is known as hypocementosis or cemental hyperplasia so it occurs as a generalized thickening of cementum with nodular enlargement of the apical third of the root it also appears in form of spike like uh, cemental spikes created by either uh, the coalescence of cementicles that adhere to the root or the calcification of periodontal fibers at the site of insertion into the cementum it is usually associated with the, uh, situations like teeth without antagonist teeth with pulpal and periapical infections so hypocementosis of entire dentition may be seen in patients with pages disease so pages disease is a bone disease that is a problem associated with the bone formation so in that case also hypocementosis can be seen in a generalized form so some of the other problems are uh seen hypocementosis are acromegaly calcinosis thyroid goiter arthritis and treatment is basically uh, does not need any treatment it could pose a problem if an affected tooth requires extraction so if extraction we don't uh, go for a normal extraction instead a surgical extraction is opted cemental aplasia or hypoplasia aplasia me hypoplasia means normal function is not happening so hypophosphatasia there is a absence or paucity of cellular cementum so hypophosphatasia is due to an inborn error of metabolism the basic disorder is a deficiency of enzyme alkaline phosphatase so due to that there is no proper cellular cementum or absence or paucity so this is characterized by loosening and premature exfoliation of deciduous teeth mainly anterior so cemental hypoplasia means there is no proper cementum so this anchorage function is impaired so there will be loosening and premature exfoliation so exfoliated teeth microscopically show complete absence of cementum or isolated areas of abnormally formed cementum cemental tear is another thing that is a detachment of a fragment of cementum is known as cemental tear the last one is ankylosis ankylosis is fusion of cementum and alveolar bone so cementum and alveolar bone will be fused and obliteration of the periodontal ligament space so if periodontal ligament space is not proper there will be fusion so results in resorption of root and and its replacement by bone tissue this condition is uh, uncommon occurs in teeth without cemental resorption and it represents a form of abnormal repair so it can also occur after chronic periapical infection tooth reimplantation occlusal trauma and more common in primary dentition okay so this periodontal ligament space is obliterated so the cementum will be joined with alveolar bone so there will be very problem uh, problem facing in extraction so clinically there will not be any physiological mobility and periodontal ligament space is replaced with bone in ankylosis so proprioception is lost teeth have special metallic percussion sound so we can make out whether it is ankylosed or not by tapping on the tooth we will get a metallic percussion sound so when uh, cementum is exposed to the oral environment in cases of gingival recession there will be an, an pocket formation there will be hypersensitivity so that's all about uh, cementum so we were talking about the cells cementoblasts and cementocytes and we discussed about cemento enamel junction and its four types cemento dentinal junction and its various functions 
anchorage adaptation repair and resorption and the developmental anomalies associated with cementum that is cementicles enamel pearls cemental hyperplasia i told you what is hyperplasia and hypertrophy cemental hyperplasia or hypercementosis cemental aplasia or hyperplasia that is hypophosphatasia and ankylosis so uh, these are the short knots like cemento enamel junction is a short knot all these are short knots cementicles enamel pearls hypercementosis and the functions of cementum and cementoblast cementocytes are uh, again could be a short knot so i will come up with our next topic alveolar bone mm, in my next sessions hope you understood about the cementum cementum is a little uh, small topic compared to our periodontal ligament and gingiva but uh, questions will be asked uh, in the first session we had seen uh, the cementum and its basic characteristics and the parts of cementum that is cellular and acellular cementum so i'll come up with alveolar bone in my next session thank you mm -hmm.